Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And here I wanted to make a somewhat informal video showing you how I use Camtasia to edit my lecture videos. Given the time constraints I'm currently under, I probably won't take as much time to edit this video as I will in editing the video I'm about to edit. Although I could, come to think of it, record a video of me editing the video I'm making right now where I'm showing you how I edit the signals and systems video that I'm about to edit. Anyway, that could go very meta and make us all go insane very quickly. So this is Camtasia. Here's the audio, here's the video. And whenever I import a new piece of video or record a new piece of video, I generally like to split the audio and video so I can edit those separately. So here's a bit of a start of a lecture. Let's talk about how Laplace transforms and Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. So usually what I'll do in one of these Khan Academy style videos is I'll scrub back and forth and find places where I make mistakes and need to rewind. So here, uh, what did I do here? I started to use a bracket for the X, which I'm not supposed to. So I want to get rid of that. And what I just did is I use Cloverleaf T. If you're on a Windows or Linux machine, you'll probably have some other command key that you need to press. And what that does is that does a split on whatever is selected. So if I did that here, I can do a split and split that. Let me undo that. Now, there's sometimes where you'll want to split everything. And so at that point, you might want to do a split all, which is shift cloverleaf T. Again, you'll probably have an, some equivalent on a PC, split it like that. And now that gives me an easy way to pull out that little bit. So I had, okay, that's where I undid that using an undo function. I use Autodesk Sketchbook. Okay, so that's the section that I don't want anymore. So I can click on that, and then I can just hit the delete key. Let me see if I did that anywhere else. Okay, so there's no other mistakes in this section. Let's see what's happening in the audio for their particular domains. Okay, so I stopped talking for a while, and in that section where I stopped talking, that's when I wrote this. And sometimes if I'm doing this sort of lecture, I'll say sum of n equals zero to infinity, but I probably have already done some lectures where I've shown these transforms, so I don't necessarily need to narrate all of this. And let's see what I say next. So the main operation, so the, mm, so the main, okay, so that's where I messed up a couple of times starting. I will obviously want to cut that out. So the main operation we've been using in the continuous uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a case where you see why I went Let's ahead and just stopped the video and went on to make another recording. So in general, it's a bad idea to try to do a giant recording at one time because you'll find out you messed up the microphone settings and you recorded silence, or you accidentally recorded your laptop microphone instead of your decent microphone that you plug in externally, and. Sometimes Camtasia will just crash or whatever. And I should mention, I use Camtasia both to capture the screen when I'm using Autodesk Sketchbook, and I also use it for the editing. I'm actually recording this right now using QuickTime because obviously if I'm using Camtasia to record, it doesn't let me edit at the same time. So I'll have to pull in and that QuickTime video later. So when I stopped yeah. there, it wasn't just that I made a mistake in the sentence. In the continuous. I probably thought of a better way to just say whatever it was that I was going for because none of my lectures are scripted. And you, if you've watched a few of them, you've probably figured that out. But that's not just me being lazy. When people make a lecture online where they write a script and then read it, a few things happen. One is people tend to write the way they would write a paper or an essay, and that generally just doesn't sound like natural off-the-cuff speech. And at the same time, the number of voice artists who can take a script and make it sound natural, it's a small set of people who can do that. 
And there's probably very few professors and other teachers who can do that. So I've generally found that the sort of videos that I enjoy watching the most myself are the Khan Academy style videos where they've thought through what they want to say, but they're distinctly not reading from a script. A professor reading from the script has a fairly stilted sound. And at least in my case, I find it extremely hard speaking in my empty room that's occupied just by me here in my little studio. So it's already hard to put energy into something. And I think if I was trying to read from a script, that would just kill that entirely. Anyway, so we don't want any of that audio. Now, one thing you can do is you can grab the end here and scoosh that in. That's one thing we could do. I'll tend to just say, okay, let me click this and use Cloverleaf T and just kill the rest of that section anyway. And now we can do something fun, which is we can combine all this together. So let's see. The I stop writing here. Let me pull that in a little bit. And then let's see what the next section is. Because I don't always necessarily plan these little sections of video, I'll tend to just go until I make, make a mistake or just maybe I haven't made a mistake in what I've said or trip over my words like I just did making that sentence about tripping over my words just now. Maybe I've thought of a better way to say it or whatever. So what I'll do is I'll tend to label a piece of video by whatever the last thing I just said is and then pile these up. So let's see. So I said wrote Laplace. Let's see what's over here. So let me scroll over here. Ah. Okay, so it looks like here I'm talking about derivatives. Again, first thing I want to do is I'm going to control click on this now because I'm on a Mac on a, oh, let's see, this might be difficult. Um, I hadn't thought about this. I'm recording this in a small subset of my full screen. So part of this menu is going off. Let me, actually what I'll do is I'll shrink this and maybe we can see more. There's a bit more of the menu. So I control clicked. If you're using a Windows box, you'll want to left click. Or for that matter, if you're using a Macintosh with a mouse with a left button. Okay, let's separate video and audio. Now we can see what we have here. The initial conditions are zero. Okay, these are all snorts, I assume. Okay, let me get rid of the snorts. Okay, initial conditions. And you could stop there if you assume the initial conditions are zero. Okay, let's see. Did I say something better on the next video? Let me write. And you could stop here if you assume. Okay, so I start the next video I recorded by saying you can stop here if you assume. So, and you could stop there if you assume. Ah, so I figured out a better way to say that. Um, and you could stop there if you assume the... Uh, okay, so it looks like... What was the last thing I did that was actually useful in that clip? And I should say that we're assuming... And the... Uh, let's see. ...to multiplication by S in the frequency domain. And... Okay, there I'm thinking. And I should say that... Okay, so I think I can just cut everything here. Boop. Boop. So we've been using Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations in the of primarily in the context of studying okay Laplace transforms primarily in okay so notice I said primarily here primarily in the context and I wanted to say it a different way primarily in the context of studying differential equations and we discovered that Okay, so I don't like this pause here. Let's get rid of that pause. I'm going to shove all of this together soon. So we've been using... Let's see, what did I say? Start this? Primarily in the... Plus transforms... Prim okay, so... Primarily in the context of studying differential equations in the... of Primarily in the context of studying differential equations... Uh, did I say that better the first time? Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations. Mm, maybe this one's better. Primarily in the context of studying, studying differential equations. 
Uh, that was close enough. I think being differential equations. I said differential equations a little strangely there, but I think it works better than trying to put all this together. And we discovered. And what did we discover? Let's find out what we discovered. And we discovered that if we take the derivative of a function, that corresponds to taking the that corresponds to multiplication by s in the frequency domain. Okay. That correspond that corresponds. That course. Okay, so we'll get rid of this first attempt to do that corresponds. And we discovered that if we take the derivative of a function. Maybe I want to tighten that up. So let me scoosh this in a bit. Derivative of a function. That corresponds. To ah, okay. So let's scoosh that all together. That corresponds to multiplication by s in the frequency domain. Actually, I guess that would have been the Laplace domain. I made a mistake in there. The frequency domain. Okay, so I paused the recording and restarted it. Full disclosure. By s in the frequency domain. Let's see if I can while I'm recording this. QuickTime video explaining how I edit. Let's see if I can record an annotation where I'll say in the frequency domain. I'll say in the Laplace domain. Let's see. Uh, where did it go? More voice narration. I want to be careful to click on my Fireface 800 interface that I use for my microphone and not use the laptop microphone. That's always disturbing to find out that I've done that and have to go back and redo it. Ah. You might have just heard the HVAC system turn on the background. Normally, I turn that off before recording, but it's really cold outside, so we'll just run with it. All right. Uh, what is I'm trying to say? In the frequency domain. In the Laplace domain. In the Laplace domain. Let's see if that sounds natural. In the frequency domain. In the Laplace domain. Close enough. Oh, you might have noticed that this clip it looked like the volume was high, and then it came back down. That's because I like to, let's look at my preferences here, auto-normalize loudness. So this is a thing it automatically does when you record a clip or when you import a clip, and it will sort of try to put things into some sort of average volume. Now, it doesn't take the absolute maximum peak and put it at the absolute digital maximum, which is what traditionally your normalize command would do in most old audio editing apps. This is more trying to normalize an average loudness. You will often want to adjust individual clips after the fact because this isn't perfect or using one of the more sophisticated audio effects here like audio compression to try to even out volumes and get things to a reasonable level. I tend not to use the compression built into here. I would if I was doing a music production or where I had a vocal and then music in the background. I'm recording through a Manly Voxbox compressor, which is drastic overkill for recording lecture videos. That includes not just the compressor, but the de -esser. If you're not familiar with that studio term, this isn't a compressor that compresses like MP3 compression. This is something that pulls down an average volume if it exceeds a threshold. Anyway, let me scoosh that together now and see if this sounds Asian by S in the Laplace domain. Okay, I think that works. Function that corresponds to multiplication by S in the Laplace domain. I mean, it does sound different, but close enough. I'm recording through the same microphone, so it works pretty well. Now, I can move these individual clips around, obviously, and I can select a whole bunch if I want to move this chunk, but occasionally that will be inconvenient because you'll think you'll have everything selected, and then you want to move this, and then you move it individually when you really wanted to move the whole thing. So what you can do is you can select all of these, and I'm going to left-click. There's probably a menu item for this. I'm going to say Stitch Selected Media. And when it does, you'll see this little zipper kind of thing here. Okay, so that wasn't as impressive as I thought. For some reason, it doesn't want to stitch the annotation that I just recorded with the earlier bits of audio. Huh, not sure why that is. It should, it should be happy to do that, but it's not. All right, 
So at least now when I grab this, I can move this whole section easily without having to select all the parts at once. Now, if you don't like that, you can pick a spot and say unstitch media, and then you can move things around again. All right, let me restitch that. So are well suited for their particular domains. Okay, so we talk about that. So we've been using Laplace transforms. At this point, instead of, let me show you how to get rid of that pause easily with a stitch fashion. Because I'm not actually writing anything at that section, the audio isn't changing, I'm gonna go ahead and do something that's actually my most common maneuver. I'm gonna select a section of time here by moving this little draggy thing, not sure what it's called, there. And now I'm going to use what's called not just a cut, but a ripple cut. So if you do a standard cut, you can grab that whole section and move it somewhere else, paste it somewhere else. But really what I wanna do is, let's do that. I'm gonna do this ripple cut. So the shorthand for that is not just cloverleaf X, it's shift cloverleaf X. And that's the most common thing I do. So let me undo that and let me do it with the key command because that's how I'm used to it. Do, 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 shift cloverleaf X. And what that does is it cuts that section out and then also stitches everything together. So this is actually probably the most common thing I do is using that ripple cut. Although I haven't used it a lot here. Okay, so we write out the section. Let's push these all together. So I write out the Laplace transform. Now, usually if I'm just doing this on my own, I do this faster, but I'm explaining things as I go. So I'm gonna split that here because all of this section, I'm not saying anything. Ah, here's where I start writing the X. So I'm gonna cut up to that section. And actually what I could do here is I could do that ripple cut trick. Ripple cut. Or suppose I'd cut the section as I just did, and I wanted to now move all of this together, I can use this little bar here to see the whole thing. Now, one could grab all of this and then scoosh it forward like that, but that tends to be error prone, especially if you have a lot more blocks up here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab that section. It doesn't want to use the ripple cut because there's no actual audio or video there, but now I can use a ripple delete. So that would be, instead of just the delete key that got rid of those sections, it would be cloverleaf delete. Or in this case, I can also right click down here and do ripple delete range. So we'll get rid of that set of time. So let's see here. So we've been using Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations. Ah, oh, I had missed that earlier. So this is a section It looked like I had started to write X of T. I changed, or did I? Why did I do that? Maybe I just didn't like the way my parentheses looked with the T. Anyway, that's a section of video we don't use. So where does the actual, t actual real writing start? I write it, I delete it. Ah, start writing it here. This whole section in here, I don't actually use, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Ah, that's where I start writing. So I'm going to grab all of this and whoop. What I just did is I actually grab things and, and use the change end functionality. That's not what I want. I want to move all of these things, slip and slide them together. Multiplication by S in the Laplace domain. Let me actually move this this way. Line this by up. S in the Laplace domain. Differential equations. Okay, like that. I'm going to scooch this back here. Let's talk about how Laplace. Let me scooch this audio audio back. Let's talk about how Laplace transforms and Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. Okay, so there I start talking about Z transforms. So what I want to do is I want to actually speed up me writing the equations, and you'll see this happen a lot in lecture videos, where somebody's not using slides; they're writing, say, a definition or a detailed proof statement on the board, they can talk faster than they can write. So they'll state the definition in these little short bursts of sentence, and then there will be a pause, and there will be a little short burst of 
another part of the sentence as they're still writing and hitting different points. And if you're watching a live lecture, that's okay, but it can become really tedious if you're watching on your laptop. So let me show you a trick here. Uh, let me move this up so you can see the menu that comes out. Oh, it doesn't quite. <laughs> Sorry, maybe if I do this, I can use this to change the magnification vertically here. Ah, add clip speed, that's what I want. Add clip speed, and I'll probably want to, oh, that's weird, did I have both of these selected? Let me undo that, add clip speed. I must have had both of them selected, and in fact I do it, so I'll add clip speed to this one. So there's a couple ways to handle clip speed. You can actually say I want this to play twice as fast, or here over here I could say maybe I would want this to play, where's my clip speed? slower, in which case I could do like 0 0.5 and have it take up more space. But if you're wanting it to fit a particular bit of uh, time, what you can do is you can click on this little thing here to show your clip speed. This business about having this little triangle here that you can click on, that's true for all of the various effects you can add. Audio effects, video effects, they'll all be accessible with this little triangle. And if you click on something and use this property slider, you can pull things out in and out too. But clip speed is something nice because if you grab it down here by that little clock, you can sort of change the speed automatically to fit a certain way. So let's see, I 1.21, let's see. Let me clip this in a little faster. Let's just see what happens if I put the, both of these on twice as fast. Something like that. All right. So now I'm going to scoot this in. Let's see what this turns into. Let's talk about how Laplace transforms and Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. So we've been using Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations. And we discovered that if we take the derivative of a function, that corresponds to multiplication by s in the Laplace domain. I like the way the pacing on that flows because when we hit this s and this x, that's what I'm saying. Multiply. That corresponds to multiplication by s in the. Yeah, so that that's nice. And z transform. But this we want to speed up here a bit more. Let's see. Let's change this to how about 2.5. Let's change this to 2.5 and see how that. Turns out. I'll grab all of this and slide it in. So I'll start saying, so we've been using Laplace transform. I start saying that while I'm still writing the Z, but I think that works out okay. Let me scooch this in. Particular domains. So we've been using, notice there is something a little unnatural means. there. So you can hear, means. you can hear the way the hiss drops out means. So and we, then drops back in. If you wanted, you could do something like this. Usually I wouldn't bother. Nobody's really going to notice. There are particular domains. So we've been using Laplace transforms. Maybe I don't want to speed this up a little bit more. Let's do that. And just scoosh this over a little bit more. This is overkill. Domains. So we've been using Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations. So we've been using Laplace transforms primarily in the context of... Yeah, so let's look at that. Yeah, I think, I think that'll all work. Okay, before I do any other editing on the lecture material itself, I want to put in my title card in a little intro video. So I have a bunch of these random sort of generic intros that I use in various Let's talk about lectures. how Laplace transforms and Z transforms. Hi there, Z my name is Aaron Lynn. Ah, the audio from my lecture is playing at the same time, and I don't want that. So let me click this little eyeball 
So this is like a mute if you think about audio recording, but it can also be for video. So let me just get rid of all of that and focus just on this little bit of video. And you don't see it off of the screen that I'm recording, but I had this video file just sitting on my desktop elsewhere and I just did a drag and drop. When I did that, it imported into my media here. And let me erase this actually, because I, I wanna show you that separately where I import the title card. Hi there. So there's where I say hi there, let me trim that. Hi there, my name's Aaron Lantrum. I'm a professor. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And this is my quarant quarantine hair learning Quarant gag. Signals and systems. Okay, so let me tighten that up here. Signals and systems. So I want that to appear on top of my title card. So I made this, whoop, didn't want to do that yet. I made this PowerPoint bit and exported a PNG so I could drag and drop it here again. It will then appear in my media bin. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lynn. So the way I would like this to play out is actually a little bit trickier. So. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lantrumin. All right. So I'm going to shrink this down. And I want to just appear in the upper right corner here. Something like that. Normally I'm doing this editing on a much bigger screen to keep the file size for this tutorial reasonable. I'm using a subset of my full screen that I'm recording, which just makes it a little awkward. Okay, I like that. Hi there, my name is Aaron Lantrumin. I'm a- Now what I want to do is take my actual lecture material and scoot it down and scoot it over so I can do this intro and then my lecture starts. So I'll need to actually unhide all of this for this to work. Now, inserting blank time on the timeline here in Camtasia is oddly awkward. There may be easier ways to do this, but the best way I've found is to select this section here, say that's the amount of time that my little video is taking place, and then right click and doing insert time. This will take everything, scoosh it over, you and now I can pull this back. Now that worked cleanly. I just did an undo undo because I was able to start where all of the video clips are starting. If I do something like this, let's say I wanted to start this a little bit later, and now I said insert time, it will actually split all of these, which is not what I wanted. So let me undo that and go back to what I did earlier. So you move that there. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Diff okay, so I'm going to grab this section, do the left click, insert time, everything scooted. Everything scooted back. Now you can play games where you can click on objects and say send to front, send to back, bring forward, bring back. But sort of the default in Camtasia is that the material that's on the higher number tracks up here lands on top of the what's on the lower number tracks. So if I were to say move this up, then that big slide is on top of my intro section here. But that's not what I want, so I want to do something like this. Now, I'm going to show you something that I often do just as a stylistic thing. I'm going to take this slide here, copy it. So I now have two copies of the slides. Why am I doing that? So I'm going to take the one that's on top here, and I'm going to actually crop it. Instead of using this for moving things around the arrow, I'm going to grab my little crop thing there and scoosh this in. Scoosh, scoosh, scoosh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have at this point, I'm going to have the full slide fade out and have the title part hang out a little bit further. I have no idea why I like to do this. So I'll just have it hang out a little bit more. And Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. Okay, so when I say for their particular domains, maybe I'll have it fade out there. Now, there's a lot of ways to do various fades and animations. 
you might be tempted to use the let's see here's voice narration uh animations there's a bunch of these and you'll find things that will do various presets, but these actually turn out to be overkill for most transitions and animations you might want to do. They're sort of some preset settings, but also can do some much more complicated things. And I found it easier actually to use either transitions or behaviors, depending on what you want to do. So right now I'm going to use a transition and select fade. Now you can transition between sections of videos. If you have two sections of videos back to back and you slide a transition between them, that will fade between them. Here it's just transitioning from here to nothingness. Or domains. So that's reasonable. Or there are particular domains. So we'll, we'll go with that. And you can change the amount of time it takes to fade. And Z transforms are well suited for their particular. But that's a little crazy. So let's just go with that. There are particular domains. I like that. And then what I'll do over here. Signals and systems. Let's talk about. So when I start writing, let's talk about how. I want it to have faded out by that point. So I'll put another fade here. Signals and systems. Let's talk about. So this is where systems. that tech tower part at the top starts fading. Signals and systems. Let's talk. So it's out of the scene by the time the writing Let's starts. Talk about how Laplace transforms and Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. So we've and then at that point, the rest of the title card fades out. I don't know. I don't know why I like to do that. It's just a little flourish. All right. So what about me up in the corner here? Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electric. So there's different things I could do with that. I could put a fade in. And it's the fades are smart. If you put it at the beginning, it will be a fade in. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a prof And then over here, there will be a fade out. And systems. Let's talk. Now, often if you have two clips that you're putting against each other, you'll want to use that fade facility. I'll show you that in maybe another video. But if you just have a standalone clip like this that you want to have fade in and fade out, I like to use these things called behaviors that you can put on a clip and it will have three sections. And these are all presets. I use the fade here. So for a behavior on an object, you can get to it a few ways. So the behavior, if I want to edit it, just kind of like with the clip speed, I can use this little arrow, click on it, and it will pull up the fade. If I don't have that down, I can still edit it using the properties menu if I go to the particular spot. So properties, I can do things like position. Now I've been moving things around over here in this click and drag interface, but you could also say if I wanted to rotate it, I could type it in. I don't have to necessarily use the, say a rotation handlebar here. If I wanted to scoosh it by a specific number of pixels, I could do that by typing things in here. Here's things for the volume. So you could change the volume here or down here in the timeline interface. This little thing with these little blocks, that's the behaviors. So this one has a fade in and a fade out, and you could change things here the way it fades, but usually the presets are fine. Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor. And now I'll fade out. Signals and systems. But here, what I want to do is I want to actually show you one of my favorite behaviors. And if you watched any of my lecture videos, I do this a lot where something will slide in from the side of the screen and then slide out. So my favorite of that is this sliding. Now, the first thing I always do is there's a default behavior of having it fade in and out. Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. Which is never something I want. So I always turn off that fading. And here I've got the slide in and the slide out. Now it defaults to sliding in from the left and sliding in from the right. There's a whole bunch of different things you can pick here, but I tend to just leave it as is. Hi there. My name. So here, let's see, what do I do? I slide in from the left. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my quarantine hair. And I would like to welcome you to the summer 2020 offering of ECE 3084 Signals and Systems. Or I could say slide in from the top. If I'm walking, 
I'll tend to have a slide in and out that's based on the direction that I'm walking. Here I'm just standing there talking to my camera. In case you're wondering, I'm using a pocket Osmo camera that has a gimbal, automatic gimbal mechanism for stabilization. It's really nice. It's good for this vlogging kind of look, much better than using my cell phone. Let's see, what does it look like if I come in from the top? Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer and engineering from at the Georgia top. Tech, and this is my quarantine hair. And I would like to welcome you to the summer 2020 offering of ECE 3084 Signals and Systems. Let's talk about how... We'll... Okay, so I like that. Maybe do I want a little more time at the beginning? Now I think that works. And systems. Let's Signals and systems. Hi there. My name is Aaron. Yeah, I like that. Hi there. So if you start the video and haven't played it yet, this will show. Hi there. My name is Aaron. And then I appear and do the little intro. Let's uh let's just kind of check out the whole thing. Hi there. My name is Aaron. Do I like that? Hi there. My name is Aaron Lay. Notice I start saying hi there before I appear. What if I do this? I'm going to try insert time. And I'm going to start the clip. So let me scoosh up a bit so I can. So I'm actually going to start the clip a little sooner so that the high there doesn't. The hi there doesn't um, happen until I'm actually in the frame. Hi there. Okay, so there I'm coming in a bit before the hi there. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering. At okay, I like that. Signals and systems. Let's talk about how Laplace transforms and Z transforms are well suited for their particular domains. So we've been using. Laplace transforms primarily in the context of studying differential equations. And we discovered that if we take the derivative of a function that corresponds to multiplication by s in the Laplace domain. Okay, and then we'll go on with whatever the next thing is. Let's see what the next thing is. Domain. Let's say wrote Laplace wrote delay property. Okay, so that's the next thing that comes in. And you could stop here if you assume let me clip this out. The Laplace domain. And you could that came in a little too fast. So I added that back in. I'll split the video and audio and the Laplace domain. And you could stop here if you assume and then I would keep editing and working on it like I've shown you so I think this has made the main points one thing I will say is save a lot one thing I'll often do is I'll start adding little things here here's my second save third save fourth save and the reason I do that is Camtasia is fairly crash prone at least on my machine I do like Camtasia a lot now I haven't used Final Cut Pro, and I haven't used Adobe Premiere. My son uses Adobe Premiere and is quite familiar with it. I don't think Camtasia is as powerful as those programs, or at least that's my impression. But Camtasia's workflow is really well optimized for doing the kind of lecture editing stuff I'm showing you here. The one other thing that I wanted to mention, I ha haven't actually needed to use it, are annotations. And these are pretty much what you might expect. So you can select different ones of these of various sorts. You can rearrange them in different ways. You can change the, let's see, let's change the properties. Hello there. So you can have uh, different callouts of various sorts and different texts that corresponds to multiplication by S in the Laplace. And let's see, what do I often do here? Quite often, oh, I want to get off the crop and use the drag so I can, I'll, I'll often make an annotation that comes down. 
Let's do hello there. Okay. So I'll often have something that makes it look like it's popping in from the corner like this. And you can change colors and change fonts and all the other usual stuff. Let's see. So I might do something like add a behavior on this. I very often will use behaviors on these things. So I'll have it slide, domain. I don't want it to pulse. So I'll do that. Maybe I'll have this one slide in from the left and then slide out from the left. Let's try that. That corresponds to multiplication by S in the Laplace domain. And you could... Okay, so they're showing something sliding in and out. Now, when I was moving this around, notice there's this snap feature that's often convenient. Quite often, you'll want to turn that off to get more precision on something. So let's zoom in here a bit. Let me show you how to do that. Now, did I actually crop this? Ah, I did earlier. That's why the little point disappeared. Don't want to actually crop that. Notice that there's this nice auto snap. If you don't want it to do that, I can go up to view and say, disable Canvas snapping. That's Cloverleaf semicolon, which I've used Camtasia enough that that's a muscle memory. So here I don't have the snapping. Here I do have the snapping. So I can change that now. When you move things around on the timeline, there's also sort of an auto snap here. Like here's an assumption that it's domain, that it will want this gone by say the end of this audio clip. See how it auto snap there? Domain, auto snap, auto snap. Usually you want that, but sometimes you want to tweak this a little bit more. So you can turn off the timeline snapping with this cloverleaf shift semicolon or whatever the equivalent key is on, on Windows, and now I can move that smoothly if I wanted to do some real fine adjustment. Usually I want it in there. Function that corresponds to multiplication by S in the Laplace domain. Now, in this particular video, at least so far, I didn't need any callouts, and there's a lot of these. Sometimes I'll have something that I want to just black out. There may be an equation that's messed up, and I can get away with just getting rid of it. Quite often, I will grab a basic shape like a just a black square and use that to cover up something. So the scariest thing when you're saving is that Camtasia will sometimes crash while you're saving, which is terrifying. Camtasia is pretty good about saving its own random backups as you're going. And when you start Camtasia, if it, if it crashed while you're trying to save it, where it either crashes or quite often it will just go out into La La Land, and on my Mac you'll get, you know, it'll say application not responding, and you have to force quit it. And that's terrifying if that's a thing you're doing while you're saving. So that's why I'll tend to do second, third, fourth, and make multiple backups as I'm going. Now, Camtasia is very good at saving temporary backup files, and so if you start Camtasia again, and it says, oh, it looked like this crashed, do you want to open up the latest sort of autosave before the crash? Usually saving, saying yes is a good thing to do. Of course, you should immediately resave it under yet even a new file name. So let's say you've created your video, you like it, you're happy with it. You do say share local file and then an options check things like, I render out to this 1280 by 720, especially pictures of my face whenever I put myself in video do not improve at higher definition. So this is this is reasonable. It sort of keeps the computational requirements on your computer sane while you're rendering video. And it also is reasonably nice to people's networks when they're watching YouTube. Can't remember. There may have been a few videos where I used rendered out to a higher resolution on purpose. Maybe in my Jeep. No, I can't really remember. I think I might have had an accident on a few times. Uh, similarly, you'll notice in my project settings, I have it set to 1280 by 720. Of course, you can set these things to higher. And, you know, if you really wanted, you could do 4K. No, none of this needs to be in 4K. So anyway, you would check on those. And then uh, usually I would take out the second. And then I would say, okay, let's export. Okay, I think that's enough to keep folks bored and are busy for now. And talk to you later.